happening YouTube. Another exciting video for you. Well, I say exciting. You're probably thinking, what's going on? But yeah, we're now building another engine <laughs> for Kermit Lewis's car. So um, just keep content flowing. Obviously, I won't be as in depth as mine, um, but I'm going to try and cover some areas that weren't really explained on building my engine so that if you do watch the old build and then this build, then you sort of get it all, all in one. So, um, but yeah, what we're going to do is we are going to get it all done as quick as we can. Um, and then once that's done, he's got to get the mounts, I think, for his car. Uh, and then we're just going to drop it straight in. And then I think he's got the loom as well, so we'll be ready to go. But this is what it's like at the moment. Um, obviously, he's got his block guard in already. Same as mine. We're going to be running practically identical setups, to be honest with you. Um, his block's all done, been machined as well. Same machine shop as mine. Um, and all the work's been carried out. At the moment, what we're doing right now is he has got Type R springs and retainers. Um, obviously, so that he can sort of have a bit more safety on his head. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is now, we've got a bit of a rubbish valve tool that we've been using to remove the valve, so it's not very good with this in. So we're going to take these out and then get it all completely done a lot quicker and save time by getting them out. So that's where we're currently at. But I said I'm going to film it best I can. This is that head, obviously, he's, he's ported. Um, yeah, so it's going to be good to see how it performs, actually. Yeah, we're going to crack on there and get bits done. <clears throat> All right, guys, Lewis is obviously just putting the last couple of touches on the head, putting the last couple of springs in um, while he's done that. Obviously, I've got out his piston and rod combo for you lot to have a look at. Um, obviously, using the Marley pistons. I mean, sorry, the Wiseco pistons. I've got the Marley ones. Um, he's in, always a 9-to-1 or 9-to-5? No. Nine to, I think these are nine to ones. Um, pretty sure I'll have a look at in a bit. Yeah, but I'm not I'm really pretty sure they're nine to ones. So everything, everything's brand new anyway. But yeah, pretty sure they're nine to one compression ratio. Um, and uh, the rods we're going with are max speeding rods. Um, he's going to try them out. To be honest, we are, we should have done it off cam um, on camera. Sorry, um, we had a look off camera. At my rods compared to his. And obviously, I'm using the manly rods. Um, the only thing that's different on these max speeding ones, not if my camera focus very good, is on the manly rods, you've got um, oil galleries here and here and here as well. Whereas on the max speeding ones, there's no oil galleries there. Um, you just got one at the top, but inside, obviously, you've got another like sort of slit for the oil to go around. So it should be fine. But um, they look pretty good for what they are, for the price of them got ARP um, bolts in them so yeah I mean I said he's going to send it and try it he's, he wants around the 500 horsepower mark so I'm 99 million percent sure they're more than capable enough for 500 horsepower just by looking at them um, and yeah that's that's where we are as I said like they, they come pretty well packaged as well um, this is a box to show you um, yeah that's them, they come pretty well packed up and that probably proper stuff. I mean, I think to be fair, everyone says oh about chinky rods or things like that, but I think these max speeding people are actually up in their game. I've noticed a lot more people using them and to be honest with you, I think yeah, I think soon they're gonna be a bigger name than just the uh eBay specialist part. I think they're gonna be quite a quite a big part out there. So yeah, that's that's the piston and rod combo we're using for your setup. Um, pistons look lovely, didn't they? I mean, that's it, all brand new. And uh, he's had them all worked at the machine shop, all balanced and things like that. So I think it's spot on. And yeah, so that's the combo we're going to be using for his engine to produce the figures. Yeah, but if uh, anyone wants any info on it in the future, obviously we're going to see how they perform. So... Yeah, keep an eye on Kermit and see how it performs and you'll know how the rods and sort of how this combo performs for your builds in the future. <laughs> right, so we dropped the crank. No, we ain't really. We just uh, give it a clean down here, uh, sprayed it with cleaner. 
and I wiped it up and then Lewis has installed the uh, bearings with a bit of assembly lube. Uh, King Racing bearings. Um, let me see them here. Everything's brand new here. There's no no cutting corners here. It's all all King bearings, main caps and the rod bearings. Um, King washers as well. <clears throat> so yeah, now we're going to get the whole bottom end built. What we're going to do is um, put a crank in there. Um, maybe plaster gauge it to see how tight it is, to see if the intolerance is, but um, the crank has had nothing taken off it. So it should be standard bearing size with no problems. But if there is, obviously we'll get to the end of it like we did with mine. We had a few problems with mine, but it's all running perfect now, so it just proves that things can be done. Um, there's obviously his gasket kit down there. His ugly rocker cover that he's leaving like that because he likes a rat look. Yeah. <laughs> no, he don't really. He's going to get that painted soon. And then I'm going to get to installing all the goodies. So, breather kit's been put on. So, obviously, he's having breathers at the back of the block as well. Because, obviously, this car is going to be um, seeing track. So, it's going to be breathing pretty heavy. Obviously, he's kicking the bollocks out of it all bloody all day. So, um, that's really heavy to him. Looks like a weight. Look. Like look at him. Look. Cranks wider oh, and heavy on him. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> right, so I'm now going to help him install it. Um, just make sure, you, like, you got to put that bit just down there. Somewhere down there. What, in the ball? <laughs> so, yeah, now we're going to install it quickly. All right, so I'm going to film what I can. Right, so the crank is in. Um, and look at this for free life. Look, there's your two fingers. Look. Look at this. Look. There's no pressure on that whatsoever it's a lot easier than my crank was to spin so it's within tolerance and it is torqued to standard torque settings uh, with standard oem bolts but yeah the crank's all in um with king racing bearings so now we're obviously getting to put the rods and the pistons in um Put the, obviously the rods and pits together first, which we're now going to do. And then, yeah, we're going to get to it, guys. Kermit is on its way. Right. So, cranks in at the moment. This is where we got at the moment. Um, had a slight little issue with these rods. Obviously, anyone who obviously going to buy them and try them, obviously, uh, being eBay rods, they was a bit tight in the... In the bore of the piston, um, in the, yeah, in the bore of the piston where the, the gudgeon pin goes in. Um, so we just had to like sort of um, basically machine them out a bit so they're nice and free because this w wasn't moving freely. That was just like solid when that was in there, you couldn't move it. So now, now it's like moving freely and basically, yeah, it's all, it's all within how it should be now. So, but yeah, so what we're gonna do is we've got them all ready. Um, we're gonna probably call it a day for today um we'll see where lewis is work and everyone's leaving so yeah we're gonna call it a day and come back tomorrow and get everything all buttoned up so i'll film it tomorrow guys right another day and um gonna fit the pistons and rods into the block um using king race bearings gonna clean them up as you can see, I've already done one and fit them into the rods. So, here we are. Right, just gave the bore a light lube with some oil. Um, obviously the smaller cutouts are the exhaust side. So, I've clamped it like that. Gonna slide the piston in, got a bit of lube on the bearing, assembly lube and um, tap it in. So, right, just tapped it in using an oil on mallet. That one went in lovely. So I'm now gonna repeat the same process for the fourth one, bolt them in for the end caps and then repeat the same process for the two and three. So, right, a little bit more assembly lube on the bearing and bolts. I've turned the engine round now and Push them up. Make sure you line up the grooves 
as you can see on the bearing. The end caps it's the same, which I have done there. <clears throat> you see the writing on on the rod. I'll just finger tight, and I'll talk them up to the spec. Right, when you do this, you've got to make sure you bend the st standard squirters, if not blank them. So obviously they point inner to the piston. If not, they will hit. As you can see, I've bent them. And they don't hit one bit now. So that's perfect. Oh, but every time I do it, I'll check each piston. If it hits, if not, you've got problems. So I'll get the other two pistons in now, try that, and then finish off the bottom end. Right, all four pistons are in now, all torqued down. It seems to be mint. Let's see if the oil squirters are missing. So yes. Here we are then, plates on, suction's on, new gaskets, oil pump with tow the gears, race gears, a new seal, and obviously gasket maker on. That's all good as gold, all sound. So I'm gonna get the sump on. And then flip it over, get the head on. Right, ARP studs now fitted with a bit of assembly lube. They're all tight. Um, make sure you've got a head gasket that says up. And all the oil ways and water ways match up. Obviously, just common sense. But I thought I'd add that in. So, let's get the head on. The head is on. Just put the nuts and the washers on all the ARPs, I'm going to torque them down to spec, once again, just pull and polish, getting there, nearly done, well, water pump fitted, um, yeah, so, not long to go now, right, so it's all now torqued down, in two steps, 35 and then 70 foot pounds in obviously sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's now torque down to 70 foot pounds. So yes, heads on, just put a couple other little bits on, probably call it day. So yeah, keep watching. V6 cams now being fitted. Make sure you clean all your oil ways out, otherwise your cams will go dry, as they'll be blocked. Now we're gonna bolt all this down, fit the adjustable pulleys, fit the mount, what just sprayed, and so on. So yeah, get in there. They're all bolted in, torqued down, so you can get the pulleys on, can tension it up, get the belt on, and yeah, then just a few little bits after that. All right guys, it's all timed up. The bottom is lined up there, as you can see. Just to the mark. Pulleys all line up. Yep, there you go. Just this being changed and tensioner. Obviously, my one hasn't arrived yet, just so it don't go out of line and something happen. So put that on to be safe. Just turn it over a few times. It all seem right. Nothing hits. You can hear the compression in there. So, well, not compression, the air coming out. So nothing's passing through. So it's all good. And um, clean it up, get it painted, get covers on, 
stuff like that. So it's all looking good. So I'll do that during a week. It's obviously five o'clock on a Sunday, so I'm gonna call it time, go home, have my dinner, and uh, have a relax. So, but no, the engine is built. This is my first engine, building by myself as well, so that's all good. Right, so that's the motor belt there. First motor I've ever built, and it seems packed so far. So, a um, couple of little bits left to do, but apart from that, it's all good. Can't see nothing wrong with it in a minute, but it's all packed up, all tidied up. I'm going to go get my dinner, so... Cheers.